Alright everybody, welcome to your Godcast today. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to review the ideas of how to draw a tree diagram and sort of how to work with um, a tree diagram in order to sort out what your various outcomes are. Um, and what we're going to use for this today are two spinners, much like we used in um, previous Godcasts, but we're just going to alter it a little bit. All right. So we're going to change one of these spinners around so it has a few less spaces. So we need to make this a little bigger so we can see it here. Um, so you can see up the top there it says segments. We're going to take that down to two. No, nope, not one. All right. And we're going to save that and we'll shrink it back down. And on this other one, we're actually going to take it down to three. Okay. Just to, uh, just to make things a little easier on us. And let's change that to red. Excellent. So what we have here now are two spinners that um, if we ask ourselves the questions, if you spin both of them at the same time, or if you spin one spinner first, what are the total number of outcomes? Well, we can use a very quick formula. We can just multiply the number of options in each spinner, and that's going to give us the total number of outcomes, but it's not going to give us what our outcomes actually are. So if we multiply them together, we know that our total outcomes is going to be 2 times 3. So we're going to have 6 total outcomes. All right, So that's great in that we know how many outcomes there are going to be, but we want to know what they actually are. Okay, So we're going to um, take a look at both of these and just sort of figure that out. So we have to ask ourselves the question first of all. What are the two possible outcomes on the first spinner? Well, it's pretty easy. First we're going to label. We're going to call it spinner 1 spinner 2, and then TO stands for total outcomes, okay? So on spinner 1, we have two possible outcomes. We can get either blue or we can get green, okay? So that's it. Those are the only two outcomes we have. For spinner 2, we have three, okay? So we just branch out three lines from each color of the first spinner. All right? And from there, it's just a matter of writing them down. So on the second spinner, we can either get blue, we can get green, or we can get red. All right? And the same goes for the second spinner. We can get blue, we can get green, and we can get red. Now, in the interest of time, I'm not going to use the colors to copy down the total outcomes because that's going to take too long. So our total outcomes, well, we start with the B for blue, and we just work our way out. So the first outcome can be blue, blue. The second outcome can be blue, green. The third one can be blue, red. Okay? For the second spinner, or sorry, for the second color, it can be either green, blue. It can be green, green, or it can be green, red. All right? So just like we established before, there are six possible outcomes. Okay? So from here, we can ask ourselves a series of questions. What we're going to do is we're just going to get rid of all this stuff, and we're going to hold on to what our total outcomes are, and we're going to use that information to do some calculations. Okay? So the other day, we talked about theoretical outcomes, our theoretical probability. And this is where it really comes into play. So we can ask ourselves a couple questions. Um, out of how many outcomes can we have um, both spinners landing on the same color? Well, the only two possibilities are blue, blue, and green, green. So that's two out of six outcomes has you landing on the same colors, all right? So we can reduce that. So you have one third of a chance of that happening. Now that we have that, we can bring up our calculator, which I'm going to do very quickly here. 
and we can figure out what, um, what that's actually going to be. Okay, so if we bring this over here, we go 1 divided by oh, 1 divided by 3 gives us 0.33333, which we're going to just say 0 0.33. If we were to multiply that by 100, we would get 33%. Okay? So we have a 33% chance of landing on both of the colors, okay? Which is established right there. And that's all there is to it. Um, it's just a matter of recognizing what the out possible outcomes are and sort of copying them down and then building your tree diagram accordingly. Um, it's really not that difficult. You just sort of need to take your time. You always need to map it out for yourself. Okay? And that is about it for today, but let's, uh, let's take a look at it, see what we've learned. Okay, so we learned a number of things that's going to help us with tree diagrams. First, we learned that if we multiply the number of outcomes at each stage, we're going to get the total outcome. So if there's two outcomes on the first spinner and there's three on the second, we multiply those together and we know that there are six possible outcomes. Um, we learned that we should also draw the tree diagram always so that we can visualize what the actual outcomes are um, because that may help us to answer further questions. Um, which leads into the third thing that we learned, um, and this was the subject of an entire Godcast, is using the total outcomes we can calculate the percentage of each. Um, and like I said, there was another Godcast that taught us how to do that specifically. So that's about it. If you have any questions, you're always encouraged to come and talk to me. Um, that is what I'm here for. Um, so please do not hesitate to do so. Hope this helped. Um, and I'll see you guys in class. Later days.